everyone, and welcome to a special Thanksgiving episode of the Warrior Weekly. I'm Allison Warhan. And I'm Sierra Fergus, wishing you all a very happy Thanksgiving from everyone here at the Weekly. We're going to check in with some of our teachers and staff throughout the show as they share their thoughts on Thanksgiving traditions, foods that should be made mandatory to the classic holiday meal, and right now, a look at what traditional foods need to be scrapped from the menu ASAP. The green bean casserole, I have ne have never liked it. It's dry turkey. If your people don't know how to make a good turkey, just don't have turkey. No one should have to suffer through a dry turkey moment. You gotta eliminate cranberries. Miss J here, uh, Thanksgiving food that I would like to eliminate is cranberries. I don't care for cranberries at all. I really do not like uh, sweet potatoes, but I really, really, really don't like cranberries, especially those that come out in the shape of the gelatinous can. No way. Well, when I was growing up, my parents would take all of the leftovers, the mashed potatoes and the chicken and corn and everything and mix it all together and uh, called it like turkey mush. It was disgusting. So I would make, I would outlaw doing that. Pumpkin pie, because it is gross. Um, I think it would be a sweet potato casserole. Um, I'm not a fan of it. I think it's too sweet for something. Well, if I had to eliminate anything from the traditional Thanksgiving meal, um, I would say pumpkin pie, because usually I'm too full by the time we get there to eat it. I would eliminate canned corn or canned green beans. Any vegetables canned are, I think, just gross and mushy. So the food I would want to eliminate from Thanksgiving is cranberries, and you know why. Sweet potatoes, unless they have lots of marshmallows, because I just never liked those as a kid. Um, but the more marshmallows, the more I like it. I would eliminate the marshmallows covering yams, sweet potatoes, or squash, because I think people are really missing out if they don't have the savory dishes. I would remove anything made of cranberries. Thanks, BHS teachers and staff. We'll check back with you in just a moment. But first, we continue to focus on mental health and ways of dealing with stress in our daily lives. For many, the holidays can be even more crazy. For this week's Warrior Wellness, we check in with Mrs. Fussy, and she helps cover some breathing techniques to help lighten your load. And so we're just going to talk about uh, uh, breathing, because sometimes... When we get stressed and we feel like we have a lot on our plate and too much to do, we end up bringing our shoulders up to our ears and we kind of contract our um, abdomen and our chest gets tight and we forget to breathe. And I know we all need to say to keep breathing to stay alive, but we also need to keep breathing to feel good mentally and emotionally. So one way that you can do some breathing techniques is to take some time out of your day. It takes maybe five minutes a day and just calm yourself, find yourself in a quiet room or quiet space, sitting up nice and tall or laying down on the ground. I like to put one hand on my belly, one hand on my heart. When you, can, when you breathe in, you can feel that stomach expanding and when you exhale, you can feel it contracting. But important thing is to think about breathing in through your nose and releasing it out through your mouth, in through your nose and out through your mouth. So if you put one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly, we're gonna inhale for four counts. Inhale through your nose, four, three, two, one. We're gonna exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, four, three, two, one. Exhale, six, Five, four, three, two, one. So during this busy time, the holidays get really busy. During this time, if you want to take some time out to think, okay, I need to chill a little bit, I need to relax, just breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. There's not a magic number. I just like to pick a number so that helps you concentrate with your counting. It kind of helps you forget anything else that might be stressing you out. Thanks, Mrs. Fussy. Great tips. Now let's check in with Principal Rusk as she has a Thanksgiving message. Take some time on Thursday and on a long weekend to try and connect virtually, even though we're tired of our devices, 
with those you love. We need to be good to each other, support each other, and get through this together. So from Ms. Rusk to you, happy Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for you. Thanks, Mrs. Rusk. Now, as promised, more words of wisdom from our great staff at BHS. This time, their thoughts on what foods are a mandatory must-add to your Thanksgiving table. If I had my way, everyone in the United States would have and continue to have a salad that is not made out of leafy greens, but some sort of jello concoction with fruit and weirdness in it to add color and joy to the Thanksgiving table. I would have to go for seafood. I think that seafood should be mandatory at any big get together. Ham, I love ham. But how about a little banana cream pie next time? Just a thought. Chocolate milk and caramel rolls. I would make popcorn a mandatory food because I just love my popcorn. Stuffed jalapenos, they are delicious. Right now, maybe it's because I'm pregnant, but I would probably pick cream cheese wontons. I think that would be awesome to have at Thanksgiving. Uh, maybe some like good chicken fried rice. And that would be brown schwager. I would probably add Brussels sprouts to the Thanksgiving meal. They are just little balls of green deliciousness. Chocolate chip cookies. I'm not a huge fan of pie, so let's have some cookies instead. A non-traditional food that I would like to add to Thanksgiving is pizza, because who doesn't like pizza? And I would make tacos mandatory for everyone's Thanksgiving meal. I would say cranberry sauce <laughs> made from fresh, not canned cranberries, because fresh is delicious. Right, Elsie? Mm -hmm. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone! Some good suggestions there. Some, not so much. Hey, stick around. We have much more coming after the break. Stay with us. Ready on camera two? Want to learn how to make cool videos? How about working with cameras and editing software the pros use? Why not add video productions to the top of your elective list? Learn the basics, then build up your skill set. Welcome to the Warrior Weekly. Become a member of the Warrior Weekly staff and be a part of the team that brings BHS the latest in school news, sports, and entertainment. Video Productions 1, 2, and 3. You just watch. are currently on hold around the state and fans have largely been absent from our events held at school. But BHS has some great new technology that will help bring the action to you. Two new camera systems have recently been installed, one in the gym and one in the outdoor stadium. The new cameras will have the ability to live stream games and events with multiple cameras. Games will stream via the NFHS network. A subscription fee will be required to access the games. We uh, started the year where we couldn't have any spectators or fans, and we knew we needed how to uh, uh, we needed to stream activities um, so that parents and family and friends would have the opportunity to see those activities. So I encourage you to check that out. I certainly like to give a shout out to the Brainerd Sports Boosters and the Brainerd Public Schools Foundation for their help in purchasing this equipment, and uh, we look forward to seeing you back on campus hopefully real soon. Thanks, Mr. Campbell. Looking for something to do over Thanksgiving break? Head to the kitchen and bake something tasty. Here's Jordan Voigt and a guest whipping up a loaf of banana bread. Welcome to Warrior Weekly's cooking segment. I'm your host, Jordan, along with my co-host, Sam. Hello. Today, we'll be cooking banana bread. And now that we've got everything prepped, we're gonna show you what you need. You need one teaspoon of baking soda, one fourth teaspoon of salt, two cups of flour, three-fourths cups of brown sugar, half a cup of butter, three beaten bananas, two eggs also beaten. Bang, bang. Okay. 
So in a bowl, you're gonna wanna take your, your two cups of flour, your, um, then you're gonna take your one table teaspoon of baking soda, then you're gonna take your one fourth tablespoon of salt and combine in a bowl. In a separate bowl, you're gonna wanna mix the brown sugar, your butter, then your eggs, and your bananas. And you'll wanna cream that too. everything done and mixed together and in the pan you want to put it in the oven and then you want to set the timer for 65 minutes so once the banana bread's been cooking for 60 to 65 minutes you want to grab a pot holder and you want to take the banana bread out of the oven taken it out of the oven, you want to put it on a, I don't know, cooling rack and let it sit for two minutes. Now, after all that hard work, we can finally try it. And we cut a piece. guys now let's hear more from our bhs staff as they give us the lowdown on their favorite thanksgiving traditions my favorite tradition is that the day after thanksgiving my entire family go out to the woods and we cut our christmas tree getting together with either family or friends eating a lot and then laying on the couch and moaning for the rest of the afternoon Singing along with Arlo Guthrie on Alice's Restaurant. Getting together with family, you know, that you haven't seen for a long time, aunts and uncles. Oh, and sitting down to eat the meal. Having, hanging out with your family and just being together during all the meals. Um, we used to live very close to a basic training uh, base for Air Force, and we used to adopt about 250 um, servicemen and women and we would go and volunteer our time to make sure that they felt like uh, family was around. Uh, my family we like to always kind of go for a hike the last couple years. Uh, we really started to do that so then you get home and you're really hungry for that meal and then you don't feel so bad having extra pie which is really nice. As a kid one of my favorite traditions was to wake up in the morning and watch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Uh, I guess I'd still have to say that I like doing that. I'm not sure if it's happening this year, but uh, yeah, that's a good tradition. Uh, my family, like my parents growing up, my favorite tradition with them was going on a big walk after a Thanksgiving meal. Our family writes down what we're thankful for about the other family members on little scraps of paper, and then we put them all in a hat, and I pass them out, and we read them and try and guess who wrote which one is cramming all my family members into my not so very big house uh, in about uh, three to four hundred square feet on my main floor I can usually find room for about 50 people meaning everyone's in a nook and cranny. Favorite Thanksgiving tradition is having Friendsgiving instead of Thanksgiving. It's always a lot of fun to have friends get together and be relaxed, be in your sweatpants, just enjoy the day together and have some good laughs. Growing up for Thanksgiving was what, having turkey dinner and then watching a football game. It was playing Texas Hold'em with my uncles. Actually the night before, my sister and her best friend from high school and my best friend from high school, the four of us gather at my parents' house and we watch a Dolly Parton movie together and just enjoy each other's company. Now it's time to look at one of our teachers more in depth. Bryce Killian caught up with Mr. Wagner, the subject of this week's teacher feature. So 
So I feel the greatest challenge during distance learning is probably the things that I just can't control as a teacher. So, you know, I, I can't go into a student's house and I can't physically help them work or, or get them to work. And if a student, you know, chooses not to contact or engage with the class, it feels like a lot of it's out of my control. So at least when we're in person, um, it's a lot easier to interact with students and to help them out and to maybe push those students that maybe are feeling a little less motivated. So my favorite type of art to teach, I would say in a traditional classroom is watercolor. Um, I really enjoy doing watercolor in my own art and I really love the techniques and effects that you can get with watercolor. Um, it's a very, you know, can be a very frustrating but also very rewarding medium. So watercolor would be my favorite traditional and then for digital, I really enjoy teaching game design. I think that's a really fun class. I would say it's just the interaction, like to even just saying hi to kids in the hall, being able to talk, chit chat, um, being able to interact in the classrooms. I feel like it, it's a lot easier to teach when you can interact that way. Um, and it's a lot easier to get students motivated. And I think students enjoy the interaction. Um, when we're in distance learning, I think things just feel so distant, like literally distant. Like we're, we, we feel like we lack communication in a lot of cases. and. Um, it's, it's a lot harder to interact. So yeah, I, I like that. I miss that in-person interaction quite a bit. Finally this week, the Thanksgiving madness continues and ends as I test my grandparents' trivia knowledge about Turkey Day. Hello, I'm Allison Warhan and today I'm joined with Tom and Mary D. Weber for our Thanksgiving trivia game. First question is, how long was the first Thanksgiving celebration? A. Two days. B. Three days. Or C. Four days. B. A. <laughs> two the days. The correct answer was B. The next question is, how many calories on an average are consumed per person at Thanksgiving dinner? A. 3,000. B, 4,500, or C, 5,000? B. A. It was B again, 4,500 <laughs> calories. When was the first Thanksgiving football game? A, 1905, B, 1876, or C, 1939? C. A. <laughs> the correct answer was B, 1876. <laughs> Our next question. In what month did the very first Thanksgiving celebration likely take place? A. September, B. October, or C. November? A. A. Correct. It was September. <laughs> Approximately how many turkeys are eaten each year on Thanksgiving in the United States? A. 100 million B. 280 million or C. 500 million B. A. <laughs> it is B. 280 million. <laughs> Our next question is, in what year did the first Macy's Day Parade take place? A. 1893, B. 1946, or C. 1924? C. C. Correct, 1924. And our last question, which U.S. state raises the most turkeys? A. Minnesota, B. Arkansas, or C, North Carolina? A. B. It was A, Minnesota. <laughs> That's it for this week's show, everybody. Be sure to check back here in the future for more Warrior Weekly episodes. Thanks a lot for joining us, everyone, and happy Thanksgiving.